the human body, which is connective tissue. Um, connective tissue is much more abundant. Um, every single type of epithelial tissue is connected to a connective tissue um, at that basal um, side or the basement membrane. So they are really widespread throughout the body. Um, the four types are connective tissue proper, which there are some um, types that will fit under that umbrella. Cartilage, there are three types of cartilage, bone and blood. In this diagram, you are looking at the different types of cells that make up the different types of connective tissue. Um, in the first column, we're looking at a fibroblast. And fibroblasts are the most um, common cell that you'll find in connective tissue proper. And like I said, there are some other ones that are going to fit um, under that umbrella. Um, so you can see at the top here that all of the different um, connective tissue comes from a certain type of embryonic cell called mesenchyme. Then they differentiate into a fibroblast, a chondroblast, an osteoblast, or a hematopoietic stem cell. When you see blast at the end of a um, name or cell, you can always uh, assume that it is an immature or baby cell. And then they will um, make it through their life cycle and become a site. So a fibroblast becomes a fibrocyte, chondroblast becomes a chondrocyte, etc. The exception to this is the hematopoietic stem cell, which will become the different blood cells and macrophages that we have in the bloodstream. But all of the different types of cells all for connective tissue all come from this one type of embryonic cell called mesenchyme. Um, the main functions of connective tissue are to connect things, so binding and support. They also protect, insulate, and transport things throughout the body. One of the things about um, connective tissue that is different from the epithelial tissue is it doesn't have the two sides. It doesn't have the apical side and the basal side. It's not polar, as we called it. Um, instead, it is its own beast. So it does have, it says varying degrees of vascularity. Some connective tissue have a very good blood supply and some have a very poor blood supply. But every single connective tissue has something called an extracellular matrix. So with epithelial tissue, you saw that they were mostly made up of cells. Uh, one of their characteristics was cellularity. In connective tissue, there's cells, but then there's also this non-living portion, kind of background portion to the connective tissue, and it's called matrix. And matrix is made up of two things, ground substance and fibers. Ground substance, is basically um, the filler. So it's going to be the filler in the background. Um, it's non-living, it's not made up of organic substances, um, but it is just kind of the filler, the background. And then the fibers, there are three types of fibers. There's collagen, elastic, or reticular. And these fibers all have their own little function that I'll talk about in just a minute. And then there are those um, cells that I said came from mesenchyme, the fibroblasts that will become fibrocytes, um, chondroblasts will become chondrocytes, osteoblasts, ostro um, osteocytes, and hematopoietic, hematopoietic stem cells will become all of the parts of the um, blood. Ground substance, um, basically it, it functions as a molecular sieve. So things can actually diffuse through it. So we can have diffusion going on, getting the nutrients to the cells, getting waste out of the cells, um, et cetera, et cetera. And that diffusion is going to um, occur at the, that ground substance portion, but with the capillaries or blood vessels, making sure that nutrients are getting where they want to go and waste is getting out. The fibers, um, there are three different types and collagen is the toughest. So collagen fibers are going to uh, make up a tougher connective tissue. So if collagen fibers are um, involved, it's definitely going to be stronger. Um, elastic is going to allow it to stretch. So you have fibers that can distend and kind of retract and uh, give room for growth. And then reticular is um, 
a branched uh, collagen fiber that is not quite as strong as the tough um, individual collagen fibers because it does branch, but it is definitely a little stronger than the elastic fibers. The cells, fibroblasts, um, are going to be the most widespread. So all of the connective tissue, proper connective tissues, are going to have lots of fibroblasts, and we will be identifying these underneath the microscope. Chondroblasts become cartilage cells, osteoblasts become bone cells, and hematopoietic stem cells, like I said before, will become um, your blood cells. And we also have white blood cells, we have um, plasma cells, we have macrophages and mast cells, which macrophages are going to phagocytize bad stuff and mast cells are going to detect foreign material so that it can get an immune response going for the body. Uh, this is uh, just one of the types of tissue. It's just showing you um, a picture, a drawn picture, and it's showing you the different types of cells, the plasma cells, um, elastic fibers, etc. We will be um, identifying the different types of connective tissue underneath the microscope. And then this is, um, going back to that original diagram, the mesenchyme uh, is the embryonic connective tissue. When we were developing as an, you know, in, in our mother's womb, we were basically full of stem cells. And those stem cells then start to differentiate or get a job. And as they get a job, then they become other types of cells that can then develop into adult cells. So mesenchyme is the embryonic connective tissue um, cell that will give rise to all of the other types of connective tissue.